It is so fantastic to see all of you here this morning. If you're happy to be here, honk your horns. Amen. You know what? I just want to give a shout out to all of our wonderful volunteers. We have got some awesome people that have been uh, helping us park here the last couple of weeks. Got some awesome people over there that have been giving you cookies and water. Uh, many others have come. And, uh, they're setting up our stage for us. Uh, many of them got here about 6.30 in the morning getting ready, getting all prepped for the service here this morning. And you know, I said to somebody here this already today, I said, you know, churches are either doing this, come, going through this time one of two ways. They're either sitting on their hands and not doing anything, not getting creative, not getting out of the box, not getting out of the boat, or there are going to be churches like ours that have adapted to what we're going through right now, that are trying to do the very best we possibly can through our devotionals, through all of our services live stream, our pastor's roundtable prayer, our robocalls, all the different emails, things that we're sending out. Folks, I want to tell you something. Our church is growing even in a time like this. It's growing. Our virtual audience is growing all the comments that are coming in, the cards that are coming in, the encouraging words that are coming in are just absolutely unbelievable. And your presence here this morning just speaks volumes of the way that you love Jesus today. Let's give him a testimony of praise this morning. Amen. Come on, beat those horns. Amen. I want you to listen very, very attentively this morning. I have got a message and God's given me a message today that... I pray will be a great encouragement to you. I'm excited about this message, and I just want you to listen. And I want you to listen very, very closely because there are some powerful, powerful truths in what the Lord is going to be sharing through me this morning. So I want you to listen very, very closely. You know, the last several weeks have been very, very difficult on all of us. Every one of us. It has thrown us for a loop. I mean, our schedules have taken a 180-degree turn. We are doing things today in our life that we thought that we would never, ever do. I mean, we're having a drive-in church here on Sunday morning. I never thought in all my years of ministry that I would be doing a drive-in Easter service last week, that I'd be doing another drive-in service this morning and doing another one probably for the next several weeks. But you know something? I have found out that there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear in people's lives. There really is. I mean, I've gone into Publix. I've gone into other places as you have the last several weeks. And I mean, I remember when this thing first started that people were just lined up all around, you know, Sam's and Publix and other places, gas stations or whatever. Lots of fear, lots of anxiety on people's faces. And you know, a lot of people have been furloughed. Some people are, are waiting for those stimulus checks. People are have got children at home that are taking kids through virtual school. Now, whoever would have thought that? And people are fearful. They're saying, Pastor, you know, what if all this is going to happen this way? What's going to happen this way? What's going to happen this way? And you know, many of those people that are feeling that way, I found out, are not only people that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but many of those people that are fearful this morning may be some folks like you that are here today. You know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But this pandemic has thrown you for a loop. Or maybe there's some other things in your life, physical things, financial things, things with your marriage, family, whatever, have just absolutely thrown you for a loop. And you're sitting here this morning and you're saying, well, Pastor, how is all this going to work out? I mean, after all this is over, after my situation, circumstances, how are all these things going to work out? What if this happens? What if that happens? I want to give you a couple of verses as we begin this morning that are powerful, powerful verses. And I know we don't have a screen up here today to show you these verses, but if you have got a pen, if you have got a pencil in your truck or in your car today, I want you to copy down the verses that I'm going to give you this morning. We're going to start out with two very, very powerful verses from over in the book of Philippians. Absolutely a game-changing two verses in your life, if you will apply them. The verses that I'm talking about 
are Philippians chapter 4 and verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Listen to the words. Do not be anxious about anything. Did you get that? Do not be anxious. Do not worry. Do not be overly concerned. Do not be fearful about anything. Did you get that? But in everything, everything, problems, situations, circumstances, everything in our life, by prayer, by prayer, prayer between us and our Heavenly Father, if we know Him as Lord and Savior, let your request, let your request, let your worries, let your concerns, let your anxiety be known to God. Did you get that? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, everything in prayer, let your request be known unto God. That's not just talking about making your request known to your best friend or to your mate or your co-worker. It says make your request, things on your heart, your burdens, your concerns, your anxieties, make them known unto God. Why? Because God wants your burdens this morning. He says your burdens, your concerns, your worries are too big for you to handle. And God's saying, I want you to give me those things in prayer because listen now, listen, don't lose me. I have got this. I've got it. I've got the coronavirus. I've got your job. I've got the kids that are at home that are trying to figure out their schooling. I've got your paycheck. I have got your physical problems. I've got your marital issues. I've got your family issues. I've got your relational issues. I've got your dating issues. All those things are too big for you. Give those things to me. And if we do that, look at the rest of the verse. And the peace, peace, peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a powerful, powerful two verses this is this morning. And I want these verses, folks, to ring in your hearts. I want these two verses and other verses we're going to share to be an unbelievable encouragement to you this morning. I greeted some of you as you were coming in today. I saw on your face, yes, you smiled, but I surmised, I discerned in your heart that you've got some worries, you've got some anxieties, you've got some what-ifs. There are concerns, there are worries, there are burdens on people's hearts that are parked out here in this field this morning. And God has got a word for you today. And that word is this, I don't want you to be anxious. I don't want you to be worried. I know everything in your human spirit tells you that you need to worry over this. I don't want you to worry about the light that you can't see at the end of the tunnel. I don't want you to worry about the things that are going on in your life. Here's what I want you to do. First of all, if you know me as your Heavenly Father, you are one of my kids. You are one of my children. Do you get that? You're one of my children today. You're not just somebody. You are one of my kids. You are a child of the king. You're a child of the one and the most awesome God. What in the world are you doing worrying? What in the world are you doing concerned? Listen, I want you to let me know what's on your heart. I want you to let me know what kind of burdens you're carrying today. I want you to let me know what your worries are to hear. I want you to know because I'm concerned and I want to bless you. I want to give you joy in spite of what you're going through right now. And when you give me those things, I'm going to give you the peace that passes all of our understanding. Folks, I don't understand how God can give us peace 
in our darkest moments. But I know one thing. He is the one that can do it. And the reason I say that is because he's done that in my life over and over again. He's done that in your life over and over again. Who's to say that we have met a time in our life where God is not God? I want to tell you today, God is still God. He's still on the throne and he wants to encourage you this morning in his word. Let me give you another verse. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11. Listen to what it says. I have learned, I've learned, I've learned over time in whatever situation I'm in, whatever circumstance I'm in, whatever I'm going through, coronavirus or not, I've learned, I've learned to be content. Why is that? Because we know who's got coronavirus. We know who's got our next breath. We know who has everything in our life. Folks, it's not us. It's not the government. It's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's got it. He's always got it. He always will have it. Paul says, I've learned. I've learned a valuable lesson. Whatever I'm going through, I'm going to be content. I know it doesn't make any human sense for me to be content today, Pastor. Look at all the things that aren't going right. But you know what? Folks, listen. Our confidence is not in anything else. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Amen? That's how it is. That's what He wants us to understand this morning. I am a firm believer today that whatever we face in life, whatever we face in life, coronavirus, financial health relationships, family, job issues, whatever difficulty, Jesus wants to give you, he wants to give me a supernatural peace that this world does not have any idea what it's all about. How in the world can we have peace when all hell is breaking loose in our life? It's a supernatural power. It's a supernatural fearlessness. It's based not on who we are, but on who he is. Did you hear me? Our peace, our satisfaction, our contentment when we go through things is not based on us. No. It's based on the one that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's based on the one that has never let you down. It's, so, it's based on the one that could never, ever love you more than he loves you today. It's based on the one that knows the hairs or the lack thereof on your head. It's based on he knows when the sparrow falls. He knows about you he knows your heart, he knows your burdens, he knows your concerns, and he said, listen, I, in spite of all of that, I want to give you a spiritual fearlessness this morning that's based not on who you are. It's not based on the circumstances, no. Listen to me. It's based on who I am. Let me ask you a question this morning. Is the peace that you have in your life, is it founded on your circumstances or is it founded on Jesus Christ? If your peace is founded on the things of this world, if it's founded on the Dow Jones, if it's founded on what is happening in the coronavirus or what's happening in and your job or whatever. If it's founded on that, folks, let me tell you something. I know what you're going through this morning. You are a nervous wreck. You're an absolute nervous wreck. You are completely nervous. You've got anxiety. You've got worries all over the place. Many have asked me in the last several weeks, Pastor, and I want you to listen to this now. Listen closely. Pastor, what is God doing? What's God up to? What is he doing? Through the coronavirus. I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you what he's up to. He's up to the same thing he's always been up to. He's up to the same thing. No matter whether it's coronavirus, 
no matter whatever crisis it is in your life, health, financial, marital, whatever relationship, he's up to the same thing he's always been up to. And that is, listen to me, he is giving each and every one of us right now a spiritual litmus test. He's giving us a spiritual litmus test. He said, Pastor, what do you mean? He's saying this. When things like that happen to us, when things like that happen to our nation, it is a litmus test to say this to us. Is your life based on the reality of who I really am in your life? Is your life right now, through whatever you're going through, is it based on the reality this morning of who real Jesus really is on your, in your life? Or is the foundation what rules your life based on the circumstances of this world? You see, when Paul was writing these scriptures, he was not at the Holiday Inn. He was not at the Hilton. He wasn't getting a free buffet breakfast. His pillow was not soft. His sheets and the bed that he was laying in was not one of those sleep matter beds, sleep number beds, whatever you call them things. It wasn't one of those, no. He was sitting in prison when he wrote those verses. He was watching rats go across his feet. He was not getting fed. He was getting beat up. He was getting tortured. And he says, you know what? Whatever state I'm in, whether I'm in the jail, whether I'm at the Holiday Inn, whether I'm at the Hilton, I am content. Because you know what? My contentment is not based on where I am. My contentment is not based on what I'm going through. No, there is a supernatural fearlessness in my life that you, nothing in this world can ever take away. You know why? because my hope is built on Jesus. Folks, let me say this to you today. Hey, there is one that never moves. There's one that's never changing in our life, and his name is Jesus. And if you're here this morning, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let this pastor share a word of encouragement to you. How can I be loved, pastor? You don't know my past. You don't know the skeletons in my closet. You don't know what I'm going through. I may not know, but I know one that does. His name is Jesus. And you know what? Here's some good news for you today. No one can love you more. He loves you with all of your past, loves you with your present, even loves you with your future. And he says, I want to give you that kind of peace. Folks, let me say this. We need to make sure that that litmus test today when we come up against things in our life, is based on Jesus Christ. Not who we are, but who he is. For those of us that know Jesus this morning as our Lord and Savior, I want to give you a powerful, powerful truth. Another one. Write it down. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. This is a verse that no matter what you and I ever go through in life, this is a verse. It's a foundational verse. It's a foundational pillar in our life that you can bank on. Listen to what it says. Romans 8, 28. We know. We don't think we know. It says we know. If we know him as Lord and Savior, we know that for those of us who love God, for those of us this morning that love God, all things, did you get that? All things, not some things, not once in a while, all things work together for the good. All things work together for the good for those who are called according to his purpose. Folks, listen, what a powerful truth this is this morning. Pastor, I don't understand that. Are you trying to tell me that all the things that I'm going through right now, when I'm fighting hell by the inch, are you trying to tell me that all of those things are still working together for the good? That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you today. One of the benefits of us knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is this, that everything around us, whether it be coronavirus, every other difficulty we'll ever face 
in our life, listen to me, is working together for our eternal good. You may not see it now. You may not see it tomorrow. You may not see it next week. But the Bible says, if you know me as Lord and Savior, you're one of my children. So therefore, I orchestrate, listen to me, don't lose me, I orchestrate everything that comes into your life. Some of the things that come into my life, I got to admit to you. I'm a pastor, but I got to admit to you. I don't like some of the things that come into my life. I don't like some of the twists and the turns that my life takes. I don't like some of the heartaches that I have to experience as a pastor. You know something? You don't either. You like everything like me. You like everything to be hunky-dory. You like everything to be going right. You like to feel good all the time. You like to have plenty of money that you can go and buy yourself a Five Guys or a Jersey Mike's. You like everything to be going good. You like to feel good all the time. You like all those things. Who doesn't? We all want that. But guess what? We have found out. We have learned. We have learned. We've learned through experience that all things are not like a smooth road. Amen? They're not like a smooth road. No, there are bumps along the way. You say, Pastor, there's not only bumps, there's a lot of potholes on the way. There's ditches on the way. There's hurdles on the way. Folks, pot, Pastor, listen, I'm, I, I'm right ready to go over the cliff. Listen, been there, done that. But you know what? Here's what I've learned. Here's what a lot of you have learned. And here's what God wants you to understand that you've learned and to bring back to your remembering, remembrance. I have learned that no matter what pothole, no matter what bump in the road, no matter what hurdle, no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation, I have learned to be content. Because you know something? I know that he has it. I don't have it. I'm going nuts. He's got it. I've got a hope in me. I've got a trust. I've got a faith inside of me, Pastor, that I refuse to let go of this morning. He's got it. I know he's got it. I'm giving it to him. He's got it. He always has. He always will. Satan's trying to tell you this morning that you've got something going on in your life right now. I don't know what it is, but you've got something going on right now that God can't fix. You've got something going on right now that you feel like you've got to worry about. You've got to be concerned about. As I've always said, it is impossible to worry and have faith in God at the same time. If you're worrying, you're not having faith. If you're worrying, you're not trusting. And that's okay. Because we're human. We're human. I'm human. You say, Pastor, do you ever worry? Yes. Pastor, do you always trust? No. Pastor, does God ever get disappointed at you as a pastor for not trusting him the way you ought to? The answer is yes. I am not invincible. You're not invincible. But here's what I've learned. I've learned in whatever state that I'm in that God's got it. I've learned that whatever comes my way as one of his children, he funnels everything. I've learned that no matter what comes my way, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me and gave his blood for me. I am a firm believer that God does not allow anything to come into this pastor's life that I cannot do all things through him that strengthens me. I believe that. God never allows anything in my life, nor does he ever allow anything in your life. That if you give it to him in prayer, that you are not more than a conqueror through him that loved you. I just implore you this morning, I challenge you this morning to give God the burdens. Give him your heartaches. Give him your tears. Give him your concerns this morning. Let him know what's ticking you off. Let him know what's stressing you. Let him know. Give it to him. Say, God, I can't take this. I'm giving it to you. Listen, God is on top of all of this. What is this problem we're going through, Pastor, in our nation? I'll tell you what it is. It's a wake-up call in our life. It's not only a litmus test, folks. It's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call for our country. Do you know that? I'm praying that God, through this virus will get people back to looking unto him. This nation needs a revival today. This nation has gone too far away from Jesus Christ. This nation has drifted from the principles, the foundation of God's word, the foundations that this country was founded on. Listen, if God has to put us on our back 
flat on our knees through this to get us to look up to him, it'll all be worth it. Our nation needs to get back to Jesus Christ. And God is working. He's working through this. We have had people that have been watching our broadcast on live stream, people that are coming on Sunday mornings, people that are emailing us, calling our office. They've never been here before. They didn't even know about our church, but you know what? They are seeking now. You know why? Because they're fearful. They know that things are not going the way they used to go. We're seeing some things in our life today we thought we'd never see. They know that this world is not going right. They're fearful. They need answers. And thank God, this church stands 24-7 to give them the answer. We've got the answer. You know what the answer is? The answer is the old rugged cross. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know what? That blood that Jesus shed on that old rugged cross is just as valuable today as it was the day he shed it. That blood he shed on the cross is still as powerful as it ever has been. Let me ask you a question today. Is the life you're living right now, it is, it a is it a confirmation of Him truly being your Lord and Savior? Is it a confirmation of who He is in your life? If it is, let me tell you something. You are living a life that is based on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're living a life that's based on the one true awesome God. You're living a life that is based on him beginning, being the beginning and the end. Let me give you some encouragement. He is our provider this morning. He is our sustainer this morning. He is our protector. He is our strength. He is our savior. He is the all time undisputed that Jesus Christ and his righteousness on Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Let me tell you this morning, if you apply these truths to your life, they will be game changers. They'll be game changers not only in your circumstances and situations, but more importantly, these truths will be a game changer in your eternity. If you're here this morning, I want to give you a litmus test. I want you to listen to this very closely as we close this morning, and that is this. If you are standing before Jesus Christ today, if you were to die, and you were standing before Jesus Christ today, and he asked you this question, how would you answer it? Why should I let you into my heaven? How would you answer that question? You say, I was at the Point Church last Sunday. Didn't you see me? I'm a member of the Point Church. My mom and dad were raised, and they knew the Lord and Savior. I, I've read my Bible occasionally. I've prayed occasionally. I, I've done good. No, 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 no. That's not the right answer. There's only one answer to that question that will get you into heaven. You know what that answer is? It's this right here. Jesus Christ. I know that you went to the cross 2,000 years ago. I know that you shed your blood for me. I've asked you to come in to forgive me of my sins. And I've asked you to come in to be my Lord and my Savior. If you're here this morning and you've never, ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'd like for you to bow your head right now in your car. And I would like for you to pray these simple, simple words after me. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe with all of my heart that you went to the cross, that you died on the cross, that you shed your blood for my sins. I want to ask you right now to forgive me of my sins. And I want to ask you right now to come into my heart and to be my Lord and my Savior. 
Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for making. If you're here and you have seriously, and I mean seriously, prayed that prayer and you've meant it with all of your heart, why don't you just simply honk your horn one time in affirmation of the decision that you've made here this morning? Amen. Thank you. Those of you that know Jesus, you've come in here with a heavy burden. You've come in here with concerns, worries, broken heart, fighting hell by the inch, even tears. You've learned this morning that the Bible says for us to be content in whatever we're going through. You are going to this morning transfer your burdens, your cares, your difficulties you're going to transfer those to him in prayer. And you are asking him this morning that when you do that, that he would give you a supernatural peace. That he would give you a supernatural fearlessness in your life that you didn't have when you drove in. If you're giving him those things today, if you're truly saying in your heart, in your spirit, that your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. As a word of praise today, why don't you just beep your horn and let Him know it? Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you so much for being with us in this drive-in service. I want to thank you for all the people that are in this field. Lord, what a joy it was as a pastor to see these people come in, Lord, this morning and to fill this field. We've got a full field of people that are hungering and thirsting for your word. Thank you, Lord, for being the God, the mighty, the awesome God that you are. Thank you for showing up this morning, Lord, with your spirit. Thank you for the two people that beeped their horns saying that they had received you as their Lord and Savior. I don't know who they are, but you do. Thank you for the other many people that beat their horns saying that I'm going to turn my game face around. I'm going to start letting my life be content even though I don't understand everything that's going on because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Lord, we praise you. And we ask that you would just bring us back again next week to get encouraged. Lord, we need encouragement. We need spiritual fuel. And Lord, this church is open to give it. Lord, we pray for everyone here that you give them a good week. You give them a great week, a joyful week, even in the midst of this health crisis. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Let me again as pastor today just say very sincerely to all of you that are here, we so appreciate you being here. And those of you that are our guests today, you're our honored guest. We thank you so much. I met some of you when you came in. We thank you so much for being here. Now, let me give you a game plan very quickly. We do not know when our church is going to be open again. We're trying to monitor it very, very closely. We're trying to make a godly decision based on his time frame, not on ours, of when we're going to open up our worship center again. We pray it will be very soon. You pray for us, pray for me and my staff, that we would have the wisdom to be able to do what God wants us to do. We want it to be done in His time frame. But until that time comes, it is our desire to feed the people of this church, to feed our community with the hope and the encouragement of Jesus Christ. And we are determined to have our service here every single Sunday morning weather permitting, at 9 o'clock. We want you to come. We want you to invite your friends and your family. 9 o'clock. We'll have our, do our best to have cookies and water and a greeting face for you. We'll welcome you. And we want you to be here. Now, folks, during the week, we have provided some wonderful live streams. And I want you to listen to the time. You can go on to our website www.themainpoint.org www.themainpoint.org you can get our schedule on Mondays 
at 1 o'clock, Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, Fridays at 1 o'clock. We have devotionals, 1 o'clock, Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays. On Wednesday, we have a live, we have a stream of our service at 6.30. Sunday mornings, our stream while we're out here is not going to be when we're doing this. Our stream is going to be at 11 o'clock. We're going to do some editing and be able to put it out at 11 o'clock. I have a devotional that I put out on Friday mornings at 11. And here's something I want you to really tune into. Every Thursday morning, listen, every Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, go on to our Facebook page, go on to YouTube, and we are having a pastor's round table of prayer from 10 to 10.30. You could tune in, you could type in, text your prayer request right to our pastoral staff. We're here, we're live. We will pray for you individually right there during that half hour. Thursday mornings, 10 o'clock, Pastor's Round Table Prayer. This morning as you leave, we're going to have our offering buckets that will be out here. If you would like to give today, we'd love to have you to help keep supporting our church and I want to say a very special thank you to those of you even during this time that are staying so so faithful with your tithes and offerings folks even though we're not meeting inside our bills our payments our utility payments mortgage all of that stuff continues we are totally 100 percent dependent upon our members this is a time not to pull back but to give and for those of you that are visiting today we don't want your money. We just thank you for being here today. If you feel led to give, you give. But don't you feel uh, like you're pressured in any way to give. We're just so thankful that you're here. God bless you this morning. My staff will be here to greet you as you leave. I'll be over here in a second. Folks, God bless you. Watch our parking attendants. Please stay in your places to your directed of our parking attendants to go out. That way nobody gets hit, nobody gets hurt. Everybody's out in an orderly fashion. God bless you. So awesome to see you this morning. God bless.